Hi there. Every mining company seems to be struggling with attracting new qualified workers. This webinar introduces us to some software that makes workers more efficient and puts the resources needed into the hands of new inexperienced workers to get them up to speed quicker. Here's Augmenteer to tell us about their tools for workforce optimization. I know that a lot of the conversation around attracting talent is to help on the digital transformation side, right? From a data strategy, do we have the right software engineers in place? Do we have that kind of talent? But there's also a real skilled labor gap that's happening in the marketplace today. Um, and that's really where Augmenteer comes in. So I thought I'd start with a bit of a story just to kind of frame this out a bit and to give folks some context that maybe aren't all that familiar with who we are and what we do. Uh, but Roland, thank you for your kind uh, remark. I mean, that's really it. We're we're kind of a connected, we're, we're in the connected worker space and it's not a clever category. We are connecting the work. So as Roland said, we really do view ourselves as a digital thread within an operation. Um, and, and, and the story that I'll tell here in a moment is really gonna tee up what we're trying to solve and the problem that a lot of organizations are facing, uh, not just in mining, but really across the industry. So the story is uh, about a current customer and it's about chocolate cookies. So, you know, I love chocolate and current customer makes things relevant for everyone, right? So at the end of the day, um, they're one of the largest food and beverage manufacturers in the world and they have the world's uh, best selling chocolate cookie in the marketplace. Now, this company, when we initially engaged uh, with them uh, around this conversation of connected work, were really struggling with workforce challenges. They really were, specifically in the maintenance group. So what this meant was they were seeing really high turnover in that group and they were actually seeing it leading to some downstream business impacts that were really negative on the business. Uh, namely, uh, an increase in unplanned equipment downtime and a lack of an urgent or timely response um, to when things actually broke. Um, and then they also noticed that the preventative maintenance kind of routine tasks that need to happen to ensure uptime those weren't being done um, consistently. So there was a lot of human error. An understaffed group was asking, being asked to do more with less. And this organization was having a hard time finding people skilled you know, with any kind of mechanical background to help fill the, the fact that they didn't have enough folks uh, to, to address these issues, right? So um, you're probably asking yourself, like, what does this really have to do with mining? Well, uh, it, it's no different. So Roland, as you teed up, right? Like we're having a really hard time finding skilled labor. This is in large part due to the fact that a, a, a generation is going into retirement. I, I would also add to that, that we've got upwards of four different generations in the workforce today, right? So what worked historically may not work today. And in fact, we're finding that it, it's not working. So again, these problems aren't unique to our customer today that that, that is in the food and beverage space. Um, but it really is calling out that this, this labor struggle is real, right? So tenure's going down, um, retention's harder and harder to manage. In fact, we're seeing churn and absenteeism. Uh, the Workforce Institute group from UKG released a report that nine in 10 manufacturers are saying that they can't staff their lines adequately to meet production goals today. So it is a real issue in the market that's impacting not only those that manufacture goods, but folks in the mining space that are getting the raw materials to create those products in the manufacturing space. So um, at the end of the day, the reality is this, um, their hard, workers are hard to find, they're hard to onboard, they're hard to keep. And the old way that we used to do um, an apprenticeship program where we would have people for multiple years to kind of train them up, get them ready, really isn't working anymore. You know, and we, and organizations are pushing back and saying, We're, we can't invest that kind of time into the new hires because they're just going to a trip down the line. So um, it's costing us money to hire them. It's costing us money to train them. And then if we lose them, um, it's almost a sunk cost that we won't see any return on. So ultimately this, this whole idea needs to be flipped on its head. This whole hire to retire concept and how we skill and onboard and cross train employees. I mean, this, this needs to be flipped on its head. So, Really what happened to the business? So back to my, my story about the cookies. Uh, what happened to the business is that they were unable to meet safety, quality and productivity goals. 
they, they clearly found the old way of onboarding and training wasn't working and they realized they needed a new approach. So what we're seeing now in this customer, they've adopted Augmenteer. And what we're seeing now is more consistent standard work across the variable workforce. They are bringing on people with backgrounds that aren't necessarily what they used to look for. They're equipping them with digital tools and step-by-step -step, um, support uh, as far as how their, their tasks are done. And they're seeing this as reducing onboarding time. It's increasing time to productivity of new hires. People feel like they have a bit more ownership over their work. And this self-service concept of being able to get what I need in the moment of need at the point of work is revolutionizing how people are bringing people up to speed quickly in a field service role. So ultimately, this company adopted Augmenteer and they've seen um, a reduction in equipment downtime by 27%. And they've reduced their training for new hires, the time it takes to get them up to productivity by an astounding 76%. So we're seeing a tool like Augmenteer being implemented into a situation like I've just described, having measurable impacts to the business. They're quantifiable and they're easy to trace back. And it's quite simply, it's something that hasn't been available um, for a field service type worker um, until recent, right? So we're really thrilled to say that at the end of the day, that big problem facing everyone, how do I onboard new hires? How do I get them to productivity quickly and safely? And then how can I make sure that they've got what they need consistently to continue to do their work um, is having a massive impact on the business. So um, I wanted to just take a pause, Roland. Um, I didn't know if after that um, I, I added more confusion or if it helped to kind of set the proper context. So I thought I'd, I'd pause and- Yeah, no, I think this is, <laughs> this is super helpful, Keith. Uh, I, think, uh, I think this kind of confirms what we all have been kind of feeling is that it's it's hard, right? Um, and uh, there's no, I think this includes all the industries. Certainly, uh, mining is is in that group. Um, I'm really keen to kind of see what it is that you bring to this market because you do you do change this conversation. So let's get right into that. Thank you for sure. I appreciate that, Roland. So I thought this slide um, is less about us and more about just like what you just said, Roland. Where where we've come. Why augment here? Why do we feel we're suited to solve this problem? Really just to help those maybe again that aren't very familiar with us. So we were created in 2018. Uh, we consider ourselves a version 2.0 connected worker tool. Uh, really, and what that means is that the problems that the version one tools that were launched maybe in that 2012-ish timeframe, they were solving a fundamentally different problem, right? Let's, let's take our paper, anything in a three ring binder, let's put it on a, a mobile device, and let's enable a remote assist. And then, you know what? Connected work is done that, you know, plan our flag of victory. We've done it. Well, some organizations would push back on the value they got out of that initially. And, and, and we're seeing that today in the market. But I would also say, based on the story and, and, the, and the context we provided, the problem is fundamentally different, right? Like it's more about how do I onboard and keep workers? And it's much more than just providing them SOPs on a mobile device. So. Our team founded uh, Wonderware, which is still the leading MES or manufacturing execution system in the market. It's under the Aviva brand today. Um, also members of the founding team founded Lighthammer, which is now known as SAP MII, and that's uh, manufacturing intelligence. It's in 90% of SAP deployments globally. And then lastly, the, the founding members uh, created Thingworks, which is uh, disputed, you know, really it's the leading IIoT platform today under the PTC brand. So uh, the team that's built the Augmenteer platform has a rich history of developing software that's specific to industry. And when they pulled some of their historic customers, they said, what's, what's the gap in the market? Like, what do you need help with? Where are their opportunities? It was a resounding, we need help in this connected worker domain. There's so much data that could be captured from the field that could benefit the organization as a whole. And our workers need a lot more to be safe and productive out to do their jobs. So there's gotta be a better way, right? So that really led to the, the creation of, of Augmenteer. And, and some of these on the top, um, I'll just call out the Frost and Sullivan. We received that last year. It's the Customer Value Award, which means that customers can quantify the value that they get out of the software quite easily. Um, so to go back to Vishal's um, templates and the frameworks that, that Cisco's providing the market, 
uh, we're confident that if you if you fit us within that connected field worker category that was called out on the last slide, there will be quantifiable and measurable impact to the business by implementing a solution like Augmenteer. Uh, this isn't exhaustive by any means, but again, it's to start to kind of get some creative juices flowing a little bit for those in the audience really around. So, okay, great. So you've told me an anecdotal story and you, you said you helped a maintenance group and you said that you've got, you know, a great team that's built a great product, but so what? Well, these are the, this is the so what? These are the types of questions that we can start to answer. And from a continuous improvement standpoint, if I've got hundreds, thousands of paper-based SOPs, checklists and forms and things for quality inspections, how do I manage that? How, how, do, how do I know that the right version is out in the wild being leveraged appropriately? How do I make updates? How do, how do I know which steps workers are having the most trouble with? Like, that's a pretty hard job unto itself. And let's face it, there's probably not a lot of time spent there because you've got a day job, right? So managing paper is hard. How do you do these updates? How do I know in real time who needs to be upskilled and trained, right? One of the examples that I like to share is for a, a forklift operator, right? So if I'm a forklift operator, I have to have a safety certification in place to be OSHA compliant to run that piece of equipment. I'm sure the same would apply to mining with this huge equipment that's multiple millions of dollars. It's, it's imperative that the people are trained appropriately to work it. What happens if someone's safety certification expires and let them run that rig and something happens? One of the call outs on the framework was HSE, right? Health and safety. Well, what if you had a tool in place with governance built in that said, keep safety cert for the forklift is actually expired. You can't actually assign them that job. In fact, you should probably get them trained and recertified. That's probably your biggest value task at the moment as it relates to key. Well, in real time, how do you do that if you're not managing your workforce with a tool like Augmenteer, right? Yeah. Your Excel workbook won't push you a notification that says, hey, this is expired, don't assign the work. So that's just one example of how a tool like ours can really start to solve some real business challenges. Um, this one so is- Keith, maybe just on that. Yeah, yeah. So you, you give a, a really good example of how you're, you can tie into the kind of the skills inventory. That's data. right. Uh, you you tie into uh, I think you talked about documentation that you tie into documentation. That's right. Um, you would tie into like asset inventory type of data. Like, can you give us a sense of kind of what data types you would be able to pull into this interface that you've got, or are you going to talk about that later? Let that's no, fine. Let, but well, let's do it now. I think it's great. So. Um, we have a customer today, Colgate Palmolive, that is using the tool in probably its broadest sense. I bring them up to answer your question. We're integrated in the SAP there, right? So to your question, where do we integrate? So an ERP, right? A CMMS or an MES. Um, we've seen um, instances where we're integrated into Salesforce field service lightning, right? For the field service work and how that gets dispatched. So really we're an open and extensible platform. We're API first. And we're we're actually better that way. I, I mentioned that digital. Okay, so that's really it. So if I understand that correctly, like all these systems are in the background, and they're all systems that field workers would really kind of have access to anyway if they were sitting at an admin station, right? But what you're doing is you're actually taking um, a, an interface that is that is field worker friendly. And you're allowing them to carry that out into the field and they can click on whatever they need from a workflow perspective and it automatically connects them to all of this system information in the back end. Is that a good description? You nailed it. So, uh, okay, cool. Yeah, anyway, you sorry that my simple brain. That's kind of how it makes sense. Right? So, um, so I appreciate that. Anyways, I'll let you keep going here because I, this is great stuff. I appreciate that rule and well, and let's call it out. So one of the Slido questions on the poll was work work permitting, right? So I think that that's yeah. a really valuable use case to dive in and it, and, it, and it answers that question to a degree. Today, you have to assemble a job packet. It's largely paper-based. There's work orders involved. Um, there's multiple signatories involved. There's an approval flow that has to happen. It's time bound. There's an expiration date. Uh, if you have a truck roll, and uh, something happens, you got to go back to the office. It's not a fun process. And when it's paper based, it's really painful and expensive or can be. So just yeah. take that idea with with Augmenteer, create the, you know, we could essentially integrate into SAP. Let's say it's PM, a preventative maintenance routine. The work order gets kicked off. 
and everything gets sent to Augmenteer. Now everything's collated digitally. Any corresponding or supplemental documentation can be digitally included in the work packet, right? Any of those approvals and any of those signatory requests needed can happen digitally. Um, I could have a tool checklist before I do a truck roll, and then I may have to substantiate with a picture that says I've got my PPE, I've got the proper torque wrenches, et cetera, right? And now it will allow me to proceed to go to the job site. So software is enabling all these workflows, and that's really inherently what Interesting. Our customers find the value in is that governance and that workflow that paper could never do, right? And then what do you do with the data on the paper, right? Like if it's so being... Let's... Yeah, Sorry, I'm kind of derailing your thing here. Oh, but fine. Let's talk about the let's talk about the permit thing for a second because that's kind of interesting in the mining context, right? So uh, let's say someone's out uh, repairing uh, a vehicle, right? A, a technician's out repairing a vehicle, and they've kind of gone through all of the work for you know workflow uh, items that apply to them. They're done their job, um, and uh, and now they need someone to sign it off, like. What kind of evidence, like, you, I mean, they could have picked up the, the, the radio before and said, hey, I'm done, um, uh, sign me off. But that, of course, wouldn't have been enough. Like, how, why is this now enough? Well, I mean, so it, it's a great question. And, and really what it, what it is, is it enables everyone to work, uh, I guess, in parallel to a degree. Okay. If it's paper-based and it's analog, everything is linear. These all right. have to happen kind of in a sequential order before I can go perform the work. If you kick it off an augment here and all these signatories can happen and all these workflows are enabled, when I complete oh, a step okay. as a worker, Roland, um, that could be the event that triggers an email that gets sent to a supervisor or a site foreman or whomever to say, hey, Keith's done his work. And then in Augmenteer, you can digitize your forms. And, and now what's great is that it's not just a PDF for reference. I can make it an interactive checklist. I could provide you a little helper that in line of work, you could hit it and it pops up a photo or a video. For that yeah, after you talked about video evidence before on the checklist thing. I guess you could do the same thing with inspections, right? That's right. I could take a photo or a video, or if I'm stuck as the, the worker in the field, give me a video in line 90 second clip that explains to me what I'm supposed to do. And that's really the value. Oh, so this slide right here, I think if I, if we took this one from beginning to end, start with the digitize and automate the onboarding to make it more efficient. That second piece, how, how we guide every worker individually. We're gonna take your forms, again, so you're, let's, let's take this work permitting use case, right? And put that one, kind of see it through. Um, you would be able to create all of the, the pre-populated data comes into a form. All of the people that need to approve are automatically notified when the steps are done. As I'm performing the work in the field, I'm provided step-by-step -step instructions on what I'm supposed to do. I'm given inline help as to how to perform it if I have questions. And then when I complete that job, again, anytime I complete a step in Augmenteer, it's an event to create a workflow. It's an event Interesting. to create okay. a notification. It's, a, it's an event to create communication and collaboration. And now I'm not a person in the process, right? Like now right. people in real time are being informed where I'm at in the step and I don't have to key them on a radio. Right. Being, it's, it's, it's a real time workflow. Okay. So that's the real benefit hey, we feel. That's awesome. Hey, Keith, all this, these crazy questions I'm asking you kind of run us a bit short on time here. Can you kind of wrap us up here in about five minutes or so? And then, uh, and then what we'll do is we'll ask if you can stick around to answer questions that people have about yeah. how do you integrate. I'm really interested in kind of some of the skills uh, level assessment that you do and how, how you feed people through that process differently, depending on what skills they have. I don't know if that's what you're going to talk about, but maybe you can uh, reference that a little bit. Yeah, yeah, of course. So uh, this last one here, uh, this will kind of, this will be the last slide then I, okay. and, and we'll kind of put it to bed. So um, ultimately what we would do is it, it kind of starts with the work. We, we want to marry the work with the skills. The, the problem in the market is I don't know of who showed up to the job today, what their skill inventory is. So I need a tool in real time to manage that. So what we've done is most, most people have learning management systems and those are really great for desk workers, right? But there's not really been a, 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 a clever solution for those in the field, right? Because if, if it's classroom based, you gotta take them out, out of the field, schedule that time, train them up that way. And there's plenty of research that says we lose 70% of what we learn in a classroom setting. 
So what we're trying to do is essentially push the training and the skilling burden onto the onboarding process. So when you're bringing them up to speed and they've got these digital tools to do their work now, you should equip them with the training content in line with the work so that as I'm proving proficient in these tasks, you can start to credential me because of the work I'm doing, right? That, that's the, the, the future vision here, Roland, is maybe if I perform a job without defect 10 times, that's enough to be stepped up to the next level, right? We're, we're actually giving organizations a way to push their training to the field and manage that career progression, because that's really what it's about. I think I saw one of those call outs. Give employees a clear career path, give them belonging, show them how they can make more money. Show them how they can be more of a valuable contributor to your team and to your organization. So we have we have organizations today basically exposing their skills matrix or their, their, their learning paths, if you will, or their curriculum. You're a maintenance tech one. This is what it takes to get the maintenance tech two. Now I'm empowered to know what I need to do to shore up any maybe deficiencies I have in order to sit for that, that tech two uh, merit increase, right? Because that affects compensation. Yeah. That impacts HR and L and D. That impacts operations, right? That that's where this digital thread idea comes from is that we impact not only IT, but every other department too, engineering, manufacturing, ops, HR, L and D. You're you're creating this digital thread between departments that didn't exist before. And you're enabling workforce training in a way that didn't exist before a tool like Augmenteer came around. So that, that, that's ultimately what I would want to leave folks with is that there are dynamic ways to enable your field uh, workforce. There are, there are dynamic ways to get them trained up, reskilled, upskilled, all in the flow of work. There's ways to make them safer and there's ways to bring them to productivity faster than what we thought was possible in the past. Sure. Hey, hey, Keith, um, uh, KJ was just mentioning in the chat here, really good point that, listen, um, these field workers, they're not all that nice with the equipment, right? Uh, so um, those of us who live on tablets and, and keyboards um, yeah. probably don't appreciate really how rough the environment is out there. How do you deal with that? Yeah, so we, we run on iOS and Android devices, and that would uh, also include the realware uh, devices. Now, uh, cases for all these devices can be ruggedized, right? They can be intrinsically safe. I know that Realware makes a device that's intrinsically safe. Uh, we actually have a partner um, that creates cases to make things hermetically sealed and things like that, right? So, yeah, to your point, um, ruggedized is is the name of the game. And then um, we do have the ability to go heads up, hands free on a Realware device. And and sometimes workers are are more keen to do it that way. Um, yeah. Yeah, so plenty of ways I, to do it. I have a hard time uh, imagining, you know, someone dropping that thing from a catwalk and it it surviving the concrete floor, but I guess those devices are out there, right? Yeah, and I mean, I think to your point, they I think it's what 6 feet is what the test is. It's not from any really extended heights, but yeah, I mean, that, that's the idea. Now, most most workers are equipped with a laptop too, so we can run in a, a browser if that's something, but that's one of those sustainability things that we don't talk a lot about. Like you're no longer going to produce paper SOPs. You can like get rid of that. So you're saving trees and paper there, uh, but you can consolidate devices potentially too. This can be ran on a, on a, on a notebook or a, a surface, like, you know, a, a laptop, let's say in the truck. And that negates the need to carry multiple. For, oh yeah. For field workers that are driving around. Yeah, for sure. Okay. No, that's all good stuff. You know what? Um, like so many of the presenters here at Mining Summit, I could go on and on, and you and I have had some long conversations over time, um, right. and I really appreciate you coming back. And uh, we didn't give Dave a chance to talk at all, but um, uh, but we can certainly, if you're interested in this topic, any of the attendees here, we'd uh, we'd be happy to, uh, to to broker a conversation with Augmenteer. And uh, why does Cisco care? Maybe you're wondering that, right? Because we haven't really talked about infrastructure at all other than tablets and 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 laptops but um there's some really amazing integration work that augmenteer has done with webex um to, to to really tie this whole workflow process into in into uh ask an expert or call an expert type of uh of capabilities um also um also obviously if people are carrying devices around they're going to need to connect 
right? And and we get that, right? And so that's why we tend to work with these kinds of partners for full solutions. If they're going to want to deploy Augmenteer, they're going to want to make sure that their wireless infrastructure is sound as well. So, um, so, so these are conversations we're having together, and that's kind of why why we invited Augmenteer to to be here today. So go ahead, uh, Keith. You got uh, some final yeah. words there? Yeah, one final thought. Thank you for that. I, I wanted to add that we're working with um, Kevin's team, right? So the IOT, IOT group as well. Uh, yes. This is exciting news. Yes. It's good call out. Yeah. So asset monitoring is a really big deal. How can I do more with less in the field? If I have any kind of asset monitoring infrastructure in place, well, if I get a spec, something's out of spec or it deviates, what do I do? Well, imagine yep. that event triggered a job in Augmenteer. Now I'm dispatching a field worker, complete yep. with work instructions on how to repair it, historical data from the sensor itself. So you've got context and the means to fix it. We think that's a game changer. Hope you enjoyed this presentation from Keith at Augmenteer. For more information on Cisco and the mining industry, Check out cisco.com slash go slash mining. Take care.